All right, welcome back to this new touch designer tutorial. Today we'll make these audio reactive triangles. I've got some controls up here. I can control this whole yeah, tunnel-ish thing. I can move it around so we can see it from the side we want. Up, down. Uh, I can change how much it reacts to music. So now not at all and now a lot. And we can make it really small really big whatever you want uh, we can change the color so this is basically an RGB color mixer so we can make every color we want uh, and then change the visibility so at zero it's only uh, it's not going that far and now it's going really far. this project contains three segments um, the first we'll look into is the visual one uh, we are starting with just a triangle and an outline of a, tri of a triangle and that gets fed into a feedback loop twice. Um, the first feedback loop puts it, uh, feedbacks it to the back and the second to the front and that gets uh, composited and then we have this, so we have this tunnel. Um, that's the most important part. Then we've got some simple audio analysis. Um, I'll explain how this works. It's basically just taking average of the of the volume. Um, and then we've got some controls. Um, these will be at the end. It's not directly necessary. You you'll get exactly this result if you just follow the first parts. But if you want to be able to tweak this tunnel and move it around and change the color i'd recommend staying until the end all right the more complex audio analysis we'll get later on in the video but we do need some data um, so we're starting with a uh, audio file in chop uh, turn that to mono uh, then we'll need a spectrum connect that up analyze then a math uh, there it is Okay, then we'll go to range in math uh, and turn this to 0 0.1, this to 0 0.05 and 0 0.1, I believe. Yeah, that's it for the audio analysis. Now we can get into the visuals. Um, start by pressing tab and selecting a circle. Um, first thing we're going to do is connect a null. You can get a null by pressing Alt N or just going into the top menu and selecting null. Um, we're going to drag this all the way over here and press this little viewer button. Um, oh, by the way, we're adding a insert uh, and RGB to key. So now it's a black background. Then we're pressing uh, this uh, pane layout tab uh, and then in the right one, we're going to this arrow and do top viewer and then in the left one right click display backdrop tops and now we have can see our visual there great all right now uh, go to your circle and press polygon to on now we can see our triangle uh, we can rotate that by 90 uh, and then change our resolution to 1280 by 720 now we can reference our audio analysis to this uh, triangle by pressing this button and dragging it onto radius and then chop reference and now we can see our triangle is moving so if we um, connect a audio device out to here you can see it's already kind of official pretty pleasing um, next thing we're going to do is insert no oh, insert an edge we only need the edge of this um, and then insert a null place that here and insert another null oh that's not supposed to go yeah this is uh, how I want it because we're going to make two feedback loops. Um, one feedback loop um, that will be the forward part, like the uh, part coming towards you, and the other feedback loop will the one uh, going away. 
Um, all right, for our first feedback loop, we'll need uh, feedback, uh, transform, a level, and a composite. We can copy this structure and paste it down here um, because we're going to need another feedback loop. Connect this all up. Down here too. Then we can change this operation to add. Uh, and then we'll need a keyboard in chop. Um, this is for resetting our feedback loop. This triggers, triggers every time you press one. So we can drag that onto our feedback reference. Um, all right, now we need to reference our feedback loop to our uh, composition. And we can do that by dragging our com composition top on top of the feedback. And now you can see it says comp one. You could also type that there, but now it's um, repeating this every frame. So if we were to make it a little bit bigger, it would do that. Oh wait, let's connect this up to the output. Now we can see. So uh, we can press one and it resets. But if we move it to the right, well, it goes there. This already kind of looks like the visual we're aiming for. We'll just need to fill in some values. So this will be 1.02, 1.02, oh, reset it. Then for the uh, translate, uh, one point, uh, 0 0.012 and minus 0 0.005. So this is the one going forward. All right. Next feedback loop, we're going down, uh, connect this all up. Oh. Connect this up, change the operation to add, uh, reference the feedback loop. And we can use this keyboard in again to reset both feedback loops at once. Um, Now we need to change these values again, turn this to 0 0.98 and this to minus 0 0.012 and 0 0.005. Um, let's see, now we've got the same thing, but going backwards. Now we can insert a composite here and change this to add and now you can see we have our tunnel this is actually a pretty cool visual um so you could just stop here device out it's exactly what i showed you in the beginning but we can't change anything the cool thing is that you can get the orientation you want by dragging those sliders so we're going to make that now Okay, next part is the controllability of our visual. We'll need a constant chop. Uh, in this we'll have our sliders um, controlling the visual. We're going to need um, eight of these. Yeah, first one will be uh, left, right, up, down, uh, scale, amplitude. Red, green, oh, green, blue, and visibility. Okay, now we'll need eight select chops. Um, you can place this up here and press Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and make eight of them um, we'll have to rename them to these uh, names so in this lr ud you get the point
Okay, now we have all our selects. Um, we'll need a math and feed LR into that. Then go to range um, and change this to minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.05. Um, we can call this one uh, LR away because this will be the um, one which goes into the feedback loop that um, goes away, like gets smaller. We can now reference this to, let's see, this transform, the one where it gets smaller, and drag it on top of um, the first box. So not on the translate board, but on the first box. Um, now it's going to get a bit strange, but we'll fix that in a minute. Uh, we can copy this one, place them a bit here. And the only thing you need to do, but this will be LR two words. And we can just delete this minus and add it in here. And we can reference that to the upper transform. Oh, yeah, the first box again, and now it's correct again. Okay, now we can copy these uh, and disconnect them because we're going to feed in UD into both of them. Um, they connected both because I had them both selected. Uh, let's see, the one with the minus should go to the one down below, so to the transform where it gets smaller. You can drag that onto the second box, and then same thing for the upper trans transform. And now we have this. So now if we go to our constant, we can make this bigger so we can see what's going on. Uh, if we move QD, it goes up and down and if we move left to right works like a charm now for the skill we'll need uh, other math uh, let's see we'll have to move this a bit up uh, call this lower bound okay, copy this and this will be upper bound then for lower bound go to range and go to uh, this will be 0 0.2 and upper bound will be 0 0.4 now reference these two so press those buttons and go to your audio analysis so to the math and then we're going to drag the lower bound onto the first bit and the upper bound onto the second one. I believe. Yeah, now it's the scale is zero and we can make it smaller and bigger. Now for the amplitude, uh, connect up another math, change the range to zero to 0 0.2. Uh, now we'll reference this value to the lower and the upper bound. And now for the lower bound, click this field and type in 0 0.3 minus and go to upper bound, click this and do 0 0.3 plus. And now if we go here, we can control the amount of audio reactivity by dragging this slider. Okay, the last part is pretty straightforward. We've got three uh, RGB, uh, RGB uh, selects and we can just reference them directly to the color of the edge. So go to edge and then drag R onto the first field, G second and Perfect. 
Uh, and now if we go here, we can change the colors and 111 is white. Next up, um, connect the math to visibility, go to range, make this 0 0.9 and make toggle this, then go to um, the level of the upper trans uh, of the upper feedback loop then drag this onto brightness you can see it fades away so every frame it gets a little bit more dim then the same for the lower feedback loop drag this onto brightness and now yeah again i'm pressing one by the way uh, to reset the feedback loop you can see it gets dimmed. So now all our faders should be working. If we turn up the amplitude and can now turn up the visibility, change the colors, change the scale, change the orientation. Lovely. Thanks a lot for watching. If you've got any questions about this structure or anything else, um, you can ask them in the comments.